Hello, everyone. It's been three days since it happened, since the trailer for Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens has been released. And we are here today to talk about our reactions. And of course, we brought in Judge Matthew Sherino, Star Wars fan extraordinaire, to talk about his reactions to the teaser trailer. Judge, Jessica, how are you both? I'm great, thank you. Hey Josh, hi Judge, happy Thanksgiving, happy holidays, what a start to the holiday happy season. Holidays. Yes, a very nice uh, pre-holiday gift from J.J. Uh, <laughs> Abrams to the Star Wars fan. Especially right. when, they were, when they were initially announcing that you had to go to the movie theaters to see it, and then uh, and all of a sudden it became available to everyone within seconds on the, uh, on the internet, which was great. Wow. Well, do we have any idea a trailer was coming? I thought they were still so far away from being able to show any kind of shots. There, there were was, there was some stories that it was coming, and then they had, had announced that it was going to be uh, probably one that was coming out, and then there were some questions, would it be you know part of a Disney movie that was coming out this weekend? And then it was going to be limited to Regal Cinemas was the stories that were circulating. And then, of course, the truth was very different. It was available to everyone everywhere quickly. Now, whether that changed because of some uh people being angry of the limited release or not who knows but it didn't seem like it was it was it was going to be anything less than a full uh release uh and, and there was no backtracking but who, who knows what was done uh as a reaction or not well with any star wars movie there's for the last 35 years there's always been gross speculation and rumors associated with everything and a lack of official press releases on what they're doing. So this is kind of pro forma, uh, that reality is something very different. And I, and I think J.J. Abrams loves the speculation and the false rumors, and I think he feeds them to some extent to get additional press, and he likes throwing people off of the track that he has developed for himself. So I think there's going to be a lot of that leading up to the movie itself, because I think he likes that uh, people in the movie theater seats are going to get surprised at least about some of the movie. Uh, so I think there's going to be a lot of false speculation. And I think the trailer does a good job of, of, of leading us already towards what will probably be conversations today that will end up being totally incorrect. Well, so what were your initial thoughts about, I mean, because to me, of course, I'm not the Star Wars expert that you are or that Josh is. So I just see, you know, oh, cool, like the new R2-D2. Um, but that, that actually puts you in a, in a better place, Jessica, because all, all of my expertise is going to lead me astray <laughs> because it, it's all worthless. I, I sent Josh uh, and you an, an email picture of my, my book collection and yes. they've all been thrown out. So <laughs> the people that only know Star Wars from the six movies are actually probably in a better position because this seventh movie, which the seven isn't even appearing anywhere, but the Roman oh. numeral seven isn't on the official, uh, you know, Force Awakening logo anymore. So huh. uh, JJ's even broken away from that to some extent. So you're in a probably as good, if not better position to, to guess what's going to happen as I am, who have been polluted with the countless hours of book reading with regards to um, the expanded universe that now is just some legend in someone's head. Because <laughs> JJ, was there some official announcement as to, hey, the expanded universe is not canon? That doesn't count. Am I making Correct. that up, or was that that? Didn't no, come that, out? that was. There now literally is an a, a office of canon within <laughs> Disney, and anything <laughs> from this point forward has to be approved by that office, and and will be official canon. And and, and the official canon is the six movies. The, uh, the Rebels cartoon that's out now, the Clone Wars cartoon that just finished up are, are it really for the official canon. Everything else is considered a legend. It might Apocryphal. have Apocryphal. Right. It might not have happened. Could be just old folk tales that people tell each other around the <laughs> Ewok inspired uh, fire, uh, fireplace um, as, they, as they celebrate uh, the, the Christmas holiday of, of, of Life Day on, on on, on uh, the Ewok, Ewok planet, but th that's all they are is just stories. So oh. um, everything else now is canon, but nothing that existed before is canon unless the office of canon says it's canon. I want that job. Like, who gets to have that job? I, likewise. To me, that would be a dream job as well. <laughs> 
I think a judge would be a good like qualification for that job. Yeah. Should apply. Be like, look, if I get to. He's looking it. for someone else to take that office. I'll be happy to, uh, <laughs> okay. to, to move out to wherever it is that uh, Lucas and, and JJ has their studios for this. Thing. <laughs> so there was a massive document review project when. Uh, the purchase from Disney uh, took place you know, when they acquired uh, Lucasfilms. And with people doing document review about Star Wars and everything, I thought, like, God, I was really hurt not to be invited to that project because that <laughs> would have been phenomenal. A geek's dream document review job for an attorney. It's like, yes, sign me up. I would be happy. <laughs> Finally an exciting document review. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with this second request. Let's do this, kids. Let's do this right now. Uh, oh. Predictive coding and figuring out Ewoks and oh god, it'd be fabulous. So, but I'm. I That's a hardcore legal geek for you, right there. Oh, that would be it would be fun. How do we apply predictive coding and predictive analytics and come up with exemplars and have a rip roaring good time with that kind of document review? That would be wonderful. All right, that's even hardcore for me. So let's get back to the trailer and some of what you guys saw on the trailer and what you think it may mean. So first of all, the girl on like that reminded me of the thing from Return of the Jedi. Um, what's the motorcycles they rode on and Return of the Jedi on the Ewok you, you, planet? You, you had um, the, the pod racer type of thing. It's almost like a cross between a pod racer, a land speaker, a land speeder, and a, and a speeder bike. Uh, yeah. The speeder bike is the, the chase scene with, and, and she does look a lot like uh, Leia on that. And, and I think that's definitely what was being gone for. And, and Daisy Re uh, Ridley, who's, uh, who's, who's that actress, is, is rumored to be playing. Uh, Han and Leia's uh, daughter. So clearly could be that imagery that they, they, they wanted to uh, spark. If you look closely on that, that vehicle, there seems to be a, um, a, a sand people bar on the side. So oh. some, some are saying that's Tantooine. Some are saying it's a desert planet, not Tantooine. Right. Uh, and, and, and Abram seems to like the misinformation as to he, he I think has been saying not it's not Tantooine it's another desert planet but again that could be leading people astray and it ends up being Tantooine uh, some people say that there, there's a scene where you can only see one son I haven't been able to find that scene uh, as opposed <laughs> to Tantooine who has two sons I mean it's there's a, the amount of of speculation and, and articles that have already been written on what is an 88 second trailer <laughs> of which most of it is actually dark screen altogether yes. it is, is absolutely incredible, which does show, you know, the power that, that the Star Wars uh, juggernaut still has. It, they broke the internet with no one getting naked. It's phenomenal. So hats off. And Abrams could be a counterintelligence officer for the CIA, and that could be a future career when he's done movie making because he is that good with it. The... You know, I went through and I was watching uh, the clip with uh, Daisy, um, you know, like pausing it at various points because of what she's flying through, which kind of looks like either a junkyard or a like a like a boneyard for spaceships or they're repairing stuff. It's very uh, there's a lot of visual eye candy there to, to, to discern what's going on, uh, but it looks fun. It's right, and it has that that feel almost from. Uh, the, the first, the original Star Wars movie of, although it's technologically advanced, it, there is a lot of decay within their society as, as well. It, it's, and, and clearly, you know, in the 30 years since uh, the rebellion was a success, and we don't now know how much of a success it was, because we still see possibly rebels fighting. Uh, we still see TIE fighters. Um, we still see X-Wings. So, um, and stormtroopers. And stormtroopers, although a much sleeker design. Yes. Um, and, and, and really cool looking rifles with, with LED lights on it. Um, <laughs> so, you know, th there clearly is so still some kind of either remnants. And, and, and we don't know if this, which side the stormtroopers are necessarily even on. True. Uh, you know, they, they could be the army of whatever form the Republican, Republic is in now. Um, so, like I said, you know, the books which gave me all of those wonderful answers are now gone. So, who knows? <laughs> yeah, I, 
I spent a lot of time thinking about this, and since it's Thanksgiving weekend, I rewatched the original three movies again, or the <laughs> because I just. I felt this longing to connect with them again after the trailer. It just it made me feel so good like a kid. And and looking back and thinking about it, so you have end of uh, Return of the Jedi, the Empire, you know, the Death Star is destroyed. And a healthy number of, uh, of sh uh, Empire ships uh, have been taken out by the Rebellion as well in that battle. Well, that doesn't mean it's the entire Starfleet. And to think back to episode four, in the opening scenes on the Death Star, there was the comment that the Emperor had disbanded the Senate and had given control to the territorial governors. Well, we don't know how many of territorial governors there were, how many systems there were in their control. And just taking out the Emperor doesn't mean, even though it's a strong state run through fear, killing him doesn't mean that the rest of the empire would lay down its arms and go like, okay, we surrender. You think some of them, especially with the ability to build TIE fighters and other weapons and raise and maintain an army, would not just give up. They would stay a strong state. And so it will be interesting to see how they, if they play with that. If you in, see in, in the books, they, they, it literally is about a nine book series called the X-Wing series that, that has that exact um, idea play out where you have the Grand Moffs almost like a, uh, as a warlord over their particular territory. And they're fighting amongst themselves as well as the New Republic. Uh, and, and occasionally uh, in the book, someone was able to get them together uh, to, to actually be a cohesive empire again. Uh, and you had Grand Admiral Thrawn, you had the second coming of the Emperor, who was a clone version of the Emperor, uh, mm. and, and all of those things that happen in, in, in the book universe. Um, so there was a, a significant hot war for a long period of time until the rebels actually got control of the majority of the systems. Uh, and, and then there was a couple of, of books that have uh, an alien presence from outside of the galaxy that that come in and actually the 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 they, it became known as the the uh, imperial remnant and the and the republic actually joined forces a couple of times to uh, fight against a third party that was coming into uh, their galaxy but uh, always the the um, the imperial remnant and the the republic had a a cold war period for a number of years after that as well where there would be some excursions but for the most part the emperor ran their system or the empire ran their systems the republic ran theirs and and that 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 does play out in the books and whether or not that's going to come into play in the, in the movies is, remains to be seen but it does seem that there's going to be some remnant of the empire left and some remnant of the the rebels and in, in some to some extent which again would make sense and we'll see exactly how far they go with it. Now I didn't read the extended universe, so I'm take away my geek credentials on that one, but that's uh seems to be the right decision to have made. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I have a lot of hope in I've been watching Rebels and really enjoying it. And in the first episode, when they go to save the Wookiees from the Kessel Spice Mines, I just remember the Kessel from the Kessel Run. But in the opening scenes of um, episode four, when CP3 and R2D2 are, are getting into the escape pod, CP3 makes a comment about getting sent to the uh, spice mines of Kessel. And so it's like, okay, that was yeah. like, so are they, if they're going that deep to pull little sound bites and have them be major subplots of, of rebels. What are they going to do with episode seven? So it's and, and, and I think Rebels, because Rebels is now official canon and part of the office of canon, uh, there's been a lot of hints that there will be a lot of tidbits within the Rebels cartoon that are actually going to come into play for The Force Awakens. Well, I'm sure, you know, it's all Disney, so I'm sure they've seen in the Marvel Universe how well it worked to have the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as that kind of TV show giving some background, giving some depth, um, so that way you don't need to spend time in the movies doing that. So the hardcore fans between the various pieces of the story can really get the depth and the detail they want, whereas the more 
superficial Star Wars fan can still go to the movie and enjoy that as a standalone. So that right. would and be you're not, you're not going to miss. You're not going to know what you miss, so it's not going to affect right. anything. But you're for the hardcore gonna, fans, they love all those connections. Without a doubt. And, and, yeah. and, 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 you know, in the Marvel Universe now with Agent Carter coming in for this limited run show that's going to give even more background upon the background to some extent yeah uh, marvel is doing it really really well and, and dc maybe is starting to do that now with gotham and with the flash and and, and green arrow but you know they, they've still kind of made the announcement that those are totally separate from um the, the movies that will be coming out they have nothing to, to bear one on the other but i i don't know if that's you know i think marvel has the, the right way of doing it and disney and marvel are together as well so, that's right uh, you know the, the the grand emperor of the mouse uh, is, is, <laughs> is doing well when it comes to this kind of uh, um, bringing out of, of, of the story and I think it I think it's the way to go well, I have to say back to the trailer for a second. My favorite moment of it and the moment when I got trill, uh, uh, chills is when the Millennium Falcon showed up and the classic Star Wars music played too. That moment was awesome. I think I'd heard references before that the Millennium Falcon would be in this. Um, obviously, we don't know if Han's still going to be piloting there was, it. There was leaked pictures That's of right. the fully built Millennium Falcon and a fully built X-Wing too. So, and, 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 and again, I think abrams kind of leaks out a lot of that stuff yeah, and yeah clearly the, the millennium falcon is back a little sleeker uh for those that that really have you know the the remember the old one the the radar dish was was much more compact and square now in this new one so lando uh apparently you know he, since he broke the other one uh, i guess made good <laughs> on, and on fixing it over the uh, 30 year period <laughs> <laughs> and we don't even know if it's hand ship anymore in right. either. Well, someone else could be piloting the ship. Oh, that would seem wrong. Do we know if Chewbacca's still around? Have we heard anything about the Wookiees? I, I, I think Peter, uh, I forget his last name. Mm, Mayhew. He, he, yeah, I, I think he was signed on. So I, okay. I, I guess that, that Chewbacca, in some extent, will, will, will be a part of it. But uh, uh, that's, I, I think I remember him announcing or tweeting out that he's going to be a part of this. So I don't know what capacity or, or if he's going to be redoing Chewbacca or not. I have a feeling he will. That would be awesome. I'm, I'm fairly confident. I mean, it's, I follow him on Twitter and when they had that cast photo that went out and you could see the different groups sitting in, in circles and it, Daisy Ridley was with, uh, Carrie Fisher and, uh, Harrison Ford making speculation that that's a family unit so it's like okay so we'll we'll see we'll see but yeah th i agree with jess i mean i i love the, the beginning of the preview with uh uh, uh john boydega who was fantastic in attack of the block uh so it's like okay that's cool we got the, st you know, the beat up stormtrooper look and i'm like it's the slow build with all the geek stuff and uh, the and, and clearly scared as, yeah. he, yes. as he was and 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 those that have you know again the good ears there, there was the, the the sound of the imperial probe droid in in the background <gasps> mm -hmm. uh, Whoa. As, as he turned around and and you, you 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 know he's clearly running from something and now whether he's a stormtrooper or he was doing a luke and 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 put on the stormtrooper outfit as a disguise and, and was somehow trying to get away i heard one story saying it was a tie fighter that got uh, blown out but that's not a tie fighter um uniform, uniform. so who, who, who knows uh, in all honesty but uh, clearly it's it's they they have some really good actors and actresses uh that are going to be in this movie and and hopefully um they they their craft is, 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 makes for a great story. Well, he's the first person we see. So he's, and he's sweaty, he's scared, his uniform's dirty and beat up. It's like, all right, this, this is off to a good, strong start. <laughs> no, it's, it's not a CGI uniform. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, good old, it's good old fashioned, you know, real distress on that uniform. Yeah, it's like rock on. Uh, and practical special effects, with hints of CGI to clean things up, uh, go a long way. Speaking of great actors and actresses, my only beef is that there is no Lupita in the trailer. I want to know what she's doing in Star Wars. I do too. I'm very curious as to what her role is going to be and, and what she's playing. 
um, and, and uh, you know, she's a really, really good actress. So hopefully she'll be around for a few of the movies, actually. That uh, would be cool. And, and, and hopefully she has, you know, a really good juicy role that's, that's worth her, uh, her acting ability. Cause, uh, and, and I, and I, I can't see them not doing that. So, um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what she's going to, what role she's going to play as well. Well, it'd be nice, and Josh has pointed out before that one of the issues with the original Star Wars is, I don't know if any of the original three, I don't think, maybe in one of them, pass the Bechdel test at all, do they? Like, they do have Princess Leia, this idea of this strong female character, but as people point out in Star Wars, she spends a lot of time waiting around to be rescued kind of thing. Um, are there any where she's talking to any of the other female rebels or anything, or is it always just the one woman? Like, I do hope that JJ corrects that in this next round. Yeah, it clearly, although there are strong women characters, I mean, Mon Mothra is the leader of the rebellion. Right. But, but the amount of screen time she gets is, is, is minimal. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's, it, and in the books, it, to some extent, the, the female heroes, because Leia becomes a Jedi in the expanded universe. Right. Um, there, there's clearly no lack of, of storylines with regards to the strong female character, but um, you, you, they didn't get this the screen time. I don't think that was that was justified as to some of their actual lofty positions. But uh, because clearly Leia was a, a, a significant per, part of the rebellion, and 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 the women really did lead the rebellion to some extent. But you would hardly know that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's <clears throat> yeah. Let's break it down. Episode four, Leia interacts with no female characters. I mean, you have Aunt Prue, and that's it for women oh. in the movie. And Empire Strikes Back on the attack on Hoth, when they, the rebels are using the ion cannon to shoot down Star Destroyers so the fleet can escape one at a time through the shield. Uh, the operator of the ion cannon is a woman, and she and Leia are together, separated only by the glass tactical screen and neither say anything to each <laughs> other. Uh, nothing in Cloud City either. So it's like you go, wow, that's um, harsh. Uh, and then with Return of the Jedi, you don't see two women interact either. So that's, now they made up for that in spades in the Clone Wars. I mean, yeah, huge, huge. There, there's, a lot, there's a lot there and they're they're doing it in Rebels. Rebels is probably, the most balanced character mix that they've had so far. So yeah, and I, the, the leader of the, the the rebels and the main starship captain of the rebels is, is a female character. And there's another strong female presence in rebels. So clearly they've, 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 they've addressed that with regards to rebels. But, and, and if you look at the empire, you, you would think everyone is a white male um, <laughs> because there you, you go, you know, anytime you see Vader walking down the bridge, of the, uh, the destroyer or whatever ship he's on, everyone in the trenches is, 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 is a white male, everyone he's talking to is a white male, all the sub-commanders, everyone around the table on the Death Star is a white male. Um, and, and, and aren't whereas, they all vaguely British too? Yeah. And all British, <laughs> and, and, and all the British accent. So, so clearly in the galaxy, the far, far away, rises the, English, again. the English rose again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no doubt whatsoever. But I mean, it, it is addressed to some extent in, in a lot of the books that the, the Empire was very anti-alien. So uh -huh. it does explain why it's human uh, leadership. It, 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 there's not a lot of alien leadership with, within the Empire, whereas the rebels did have um, yeah. a giant squid leading their their fleet. <laughs> the, the, the 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 Empire. But it, you know, it doesn't make account for the the other colors of the human race mm -hmm. that, that were ignored by, I guess, casting uh, in, in the original Star Wars movies. I'll bet Lando, again, not part of the Empire, uh, you know, was was really the the only African American star of note with with the original uh, movies. Oh, and I love Lando, and he's not back, right? We don't think for Star Wars that we know of. I don't know. I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised. If oh, that'd be awesome back, if he came back to too. some extent. I mean, I, 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 I think most of the, the, the intelligence is no, but I think he's going to have some kind of something. I, I remember an article with Roger Moore went to the set and apparently delivered some lines and sat next to Harrison Ford. So they've probably 
I wouldn't be surprised if they've done some very tight lip secret casting filming so that way um, things will be a surprise because Star Wars is supposed to have surprises. Yes. And, End and of maybe, you, maybe your favorite actress there will be Lando's daughter. Yeah. Well, oh, that's yeah. true. That would be cool. You know, she could be, she can be the new uh, runner of the, of, of, uh, of the cloud city. I would like that. And maybe she has a millennium Falcon and she flies could out. Be. She, she might've won it back from that. That's right. That, that would be a great storyline. <laughs> that really would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of possibilities here. Again, when I think back to Star Wars, it's the journey story, and it's about the surprise of no, I am your father, because yeah. I still remember when that happened, and the shrieks of horror in the theater as people were <laughs> like, you know, everyone was screaming no at that point, <laughs> and that's part of the magic of going to the movies and. If you have spoilers and plot leaks, that totally sucks the fun out of the entire experience. So it's, while it's kind of fun to at least speculate of, like, what are they doing? Uh, yeah, don't suck the fun out of it. Part of the yeah, fun I, is, is going. I, I, I want to know yesterday exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm one of the people that, that read The Phantom Men. It came out, the book, I think, came out the day before um, – so I, I, I forget if it was whatever night that the movie came out that I was online at midnight to see. I had the book read the day before <laughs> because I think that came out the day before. So, you know, I, I need to know. <laughs> Literally, as soon as it's available, I want to know what, 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 what's going to happen. And, and, and I don't care if it's spoiled on the screen. But. We have different philosophies because I, I, we have different philosophies on that. I think that. I'm going to wait on this one just because yeah. of the way J.J. Abrams operates. Yeah. I know there's going to be surprises in there that are going to be worth being surprised. So I, I've literally already taken off the, the, the day after. Um, I, I got my leave request approved. <laughs> and, and, and I did that last year when they announced the, the date of the movie. Oh, and, Jesus. And, and my, 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 my supervising judge did look at me like, what is this? But... <laughs> When I explained that he, he very willingly signed, but he's at least of the same generation as, as, as I am. And, and so he understood. And uh, so at midnight, and, and it's very rare that I do the, you know, the, as soon as they come out, this, this would yeah. be one of those that I have to go out and see on the, at midnight. Judge, are... you should live tweet it. I'll stay up. I'm not going to go to the movie theater, but you could live tweet it for me because I like to know things too. So you live tweet it. That will give me some context so I'll understand it when I go see it the next day. It's you... getting harder and harder to stay awake though at these midnight. I know. Night. That's why I can't make them. Uh, actually, depending on the career, I would go with you because uh, <laughs> that would be fun. I, uh, when Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came out, I saw it the night it came out at one of the classic theaters in New York City because I was there for business. And that was fun, even though watching the movie the second time around, I was suddenly disappointed. But that first <laughs> night, the crowd, <laughs> the late night crowd, that was super fun. So that, it, it, there's something magical about doing that. When I saw Avengers, I, I saw the late night, midnight showing. And, you know, people were hoot, hooting and hollering and Thanos reveal at the end, there was gasps and cheers and my date went what who is that so and they're having to explain it on the drive home but that sort of thing is that's what makes going to the movies fun and so do you guys good. dress up for these movies no we, we i just generally comment about those that are dressed up <laughs> and, and, but but for like the, for the midnight opening of phantom menace it was you know it was well, my group of about five which included a you know the general counsel for the borough president <laughs> and, and 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 a city councilman and we 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 we, we met up online with our state senator um, so we're, we're all around the same generation in, in in a lot of our elected officials now and, and yeah we were, we were all online at, at midnight for for the for the phantom menace and it, it was it was kind of funny it made the cute story in the newspaper when I it. <laughs> that is hysterical i mean it's so as you can see, the mayor's in line, you know, like that sort of that is bloody hysterical. And there's the governor. Yeah, it's wow. That's awesome. We uh, 
I won't go in costume. I'll wear a t-shirt. And so yeah. I, I will wear a theme appropriate t-shirt. I did the same for Captain America and Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, I'll wear the appropriate t-shirt that would make sense. Something like this uh, <laughs> to, to represent. But there's another aspect of this. And that's toys. So in Christmas 2015, there won't just be the eight-year-old getting Star Wars toys, but the <laughs> 47-year-old with, you know, the new X-Wing on his Christmas list as well. And, and a, a 50-year-old woman asking for a lightsaber because that's how we're going to operate. And that's kind of phenomenal. Yeah, that new R2-D2, whatever that adorable thing is, I'm sure my daughter's going to want that next year because that is adorable. The, the, the rolling ball robot, which yes. I, I was saying, I, I, I like FIFA uh, <laughs> because he really does look like a soccer ball. Uh, <laughs> will, will be the must-have toy, no doubt, because yeah. to be able to have the remote control to, to make this little ball go around the, the, the room is just going to be a lot of fun. And, and I, I, I remember with the oh. Phantom Menace being up at midnight for uh, Toys R Us today, grand <laughs> opening of just Star Wars toys for when that movie opened like the day before. And, and, and I was clearly, you know, wanted to make sure that there were certain ones that, that I got before they were all sold out. <laughs> Well, I was just reading today actually about must have Christmas, you know, presents that have inspired panics, you know, the Cabbage Patch dolls, uh, the Elmo, Tickle Me Elmo. But the original one, at least according to Real Simple, was uh, the first Star Wars and the first Star Wars toys. And in fact, the stores were so surprised and so unprepared for the crushing demand for the Star Wars toys that they actually boxed up and sold the IOUs so that people could give IOUs to their kids. This is back in the days when I think it was mainly the kids getting the gifts. Um, and they could go cash them in i think it was like in march to actually get their star wars toys and and one of the reasons i think i was at the store at midnight to get my star wars toys is because i got one of those ious for the millennium falcon <laughs> and and came march and april and, and and even past that and they still hadn't gotten them in the stores and, and oh. as in all things life moves on i got a different present instead and, and I never got that Millennium Falcon. And, and, and I would constantly remind my parents you know, <laughs> that they still owe me a Millennium Falcon, which I did eventually get as a law school graduation present. From your parents? From my parents. That yeah. is so I, I have the Millennium Falcon, but I, I got it a lot later than I had initially wanted it. Who knows, maybe without that need and that desire, you might not have graduated from law school. That could have been that, you know, missing that, thing that you were always searching very for. Very possible, but it certainly <laughs> does always make me, you know, want that next Star Wars toy quicker <laughs> rather than later. Yeah, uh, you know, my Star Wars toy collection, the Millennium Falcon was shared between my brother and I, so that was a shared toy. I did get the ad at and that was a prized toy. Uh, Gabe got the Ewok Village, and that was his, and I had no problem with that. And uh, uh, But I had a Y-Wing, and I had both Vader's TIE Fighter and the normal TIE Fighter, while my brother had uh, the X-Wing. And so I always kind of had the second front line. I didn't have the primary vehicles uh, for, for the heroes. Um, I did have Boba Fett ship uh, Slave 1, so there, there's that. <laughs> I, I got a lot of the ships, and, and, and uh, but the, the the toy that I probably played with the most was the Death Star playset, which was Ooh. like a three level playset, and it had um, the garbage compactor in the bottom, and it had right. the laser cannon on top, and, and that in its you know it, it's an original boxed version of that is I think the most expensive of the collector items that, that are out there today. Like um, how much are we talking? In thousands, thousands of dollars. Wow. If, work, if it's in good condition, yeah. yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I did not have that. I never got that because when Star Wars came out, I was three. And so it was the year my brother was born. So ironically, my first cognitive memory of Star Wars is the holiday special which is very faded and weird because I was four. And, <laughs> uh, and uh, But that's still kind of traumatic and parts of it come back in memory and it's really weird. Uh, but then there's uh, Empire, which 
uh, I saw episode four when it was re-released because they re-released it and I saw it before seeing Empire, uh, which was, again, a super fun experience. Uh, but it is fascinating, the effect of remembering running around the back, uh, the house that we had in uh, Altadena, California, uh, had a uni yard that went all the way around the house because it was right, right on the cor this corner, and it was it was a fantastic fun house to play as a kid. And we would do spaceship dog fights around the entire house running around. So I'm glad a new generation of kids will get to have that experience. And I know there will be parents playing with them, uh, which is just darn right cute when you think about it. It is pretty amazing that you have this movie that is basically now, yeah, two generations, I mean, enjoying it, loving it. Um, that's pretty, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, there are obviously classic movies that, you know, generations continue to love, but not this kind of, this sort of ongoing movie saga is absolutely amazing. And the cartoons um, have really grabbed yeah. the, the younger kids and, and especially that it's playing on the Disney Channel. Yes. Um, the, the Rebels cartoon, I think, will, you know, add a, a very young audience uh, to to the Star Wars universe a, a, as well, which is going to be interesting to see. Now, well, we got to talk about my favorite well, part of the trailer. Okay, not, yeah, not, we have to not, talk about yours. It's, it's not the giant rolling ball. It, it, <laughs> it's, it's, it's when uh, clearly a, I'm going to guess, some kind of Sith creature lights up that new... Uh, lightsaber which which granted does have a very very weird um cross guard aspect to it and yes. it pistols and it and it and it and it and it uh, not exactly as good a a opening as that <laughs> you know it's not as clean or as clear it, it, it so clearly the worksmanship is not there with regards to the the, the lightsaber but the um the character itself just lends all kinds of wonderful question marks as to who that is and and uh, what part of the story he's going to take on. Uh, and, and that great narrator voice that, that speaks of the light and the darkness as this character um, portrays the dark part. And, and there's great rumors as to, as they, they, and now they, I think they've definitively said who the voice is. It's the actor who played uh, the Gollum um, and, and, and uh, and other CJI characters um, is, is the actor that, because in, initially there had been stories that it was uh, the, the guy who plays Sherlock, and, and but it, 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 it's, it's, it's Andy Serkis uh, uh -huh. who's, who's doing the, the narration. And, and what role is he gonna play? Is, you know, if it's him, it's probably some kind of CJI creature. Um, and and it's, you know, is it some kind of robot or half man, half robot type Sith? Is it Ooh. the creature that, uh, we see in the woods, is that the character that Andy's playing? Or is that the character that Andy was talking to? And, and all of those great questions. But to me, just to see the red lightsaber, that was that was the uh, the highlight of the trailer. It, well, it, and it goes back to Disney being brilliant with toys because we have a ton of lightsabers, but now we're going to have to buy a new lightsaber. My son's going to want that one. with the lot, Lots of new lightsabers, I'm sure, because Luke will have a new one by then. True. Too. And whoever <laughs> else... Uh, you know, they, 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 I, I have the classic Darth Vader because that one's never going to go out of style. Um, <laughs> but, but yes, no, the, 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 the tri saber and, and all the, all the, the internet making fun of it, it, it still was cool. Yeah, here's a wild idea. Maybe it's not a crossbar, but a exhaust ports. Yeah, and I read that as well. That it could be some. What does that of, mean? It just uh, the, the extra energy is being kind oh. of shot out to, uh, of the side. Because it's not as well built a lightsaber as as and, and that might be because they don't have the the crystal that's needed to build the lightsaber the right way or whoever built it is is it's an attempt and it maybe he's not a true force Sith user and maybe he just doesn't have the skills necessary to to build the better lightsaber. So we'll we'll see. I'm sure. My one concern about the new movies, actually, you're mentioning Darth Vader, just does concern me. One of the things that I think grabbed me so much and continues to grab me with the original Star Wars movies is Darth Vader was such an awesome villain, both when he was just purely evil and then later on when you knew maybe there were hints of good. Um, I've even read online some of my favorite gossip websites talk about, you know, even the Marvel Universe, they have a villain problem, like maybe their villains aren't always the most, you know, besides Loki, he's kind of 
part villain. Um, you don't have these really memorable villains that you can grab onto. And Darth Vader, to me, is such a defining part, really at the end of Star Wars, and that's why my t-shirt has him on the top of it. He really is a defining character. So that's my one concern about the new Star Wars. As awesome as it will be, you know, without Darth Vader, it's just, and I think that was one of the problems for me with the original three is that, well, you got to see his background story, but you didn't have him full on the big bad evil. So that's my one concern. I don't know how any other Star Wars without him in it can be as awesome. Yeah, and I, I agree. Vader's my favorite character by far. Yeah. Um, and and, and uh, some say I chose a career in black just to try to emulate <laughs> Vader. Uh, on, that or Johnny Cash, on, one or the on other. Some, on, on some days, yeah. But yeah, the, 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 the <laughs> I think to some extent Vader's spirit will be in this movie, and there there are all kinds of rumors with regards to that, and mm. uh, Luke digging up, and, and there's there's one leaked picture or or uh, artistic um, uh, picture that that shows a character that could be Luke with the helmet of of Vader holding it and looking at it. Oh. Um, so and, and with the Sith and a lot of the legend stories, the, the spirits to some extent. Um, uh, ha, ha, live on within certain artifacts or certain places uh, and and granted now with his transition to the light at the end i don't know if that would apply to uh, darth vader but clearly um some of his artifacts um i, I think are being sought out in this movie in one way or ah. the other and whether it's a you know a new sith that wants to kind of get the cult going again and he's looking for artifacts to do huh. that but I, I think there's to some extent that 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 spirit of vader will be part of this movie because well, hopefully think, james I think Abram, voice too yeah, in there. I, I, I think jj i think feels the same way we do that okay that vader good is, is a presence that needs to be part of the movie so i, I think good. somehow it's going to be worked in but and, and how it's done is going to be one of the, the more interesting parts of the story to me yeah the other thing I would like to see in the next trailer, being one of the old fans, is I, it was nice to see the Millennium Falcon, but I would I would love to see Han Solo, Princess Leia. Like, it would, you know, and obviously they're having to do it, I'm sure, based on their shooting schedule and all that. But the first trailer where we get to see some of the old cast members, even R2-D2, right? Because um, I think, is he in this one still? I, I would uh, I would imagine that R2 and, and C-3PO have been in every movie. That's true. They so have to be. They I think are that's going to continue. continue. And so I think all the primary... The primary shooting is all done. So oh, okay. They, 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 they just might need a lot more CGI to make them look young or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, 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 and I think that that's going to be in the next teaser trailer. That the, would be awesome. Some of the old the, folks. The, the old folks. Because uh, <laughs> I, I think, you know, this was about just getting everyone to some extent saying, I want more. Yeah. So you, you can't show you know, put out all the cards because you want everyone saying, you know, I can't wait for the next. Film. Right. Not even, right. not even, you know, it's a year away for the, for the movie Ugh. itself. So we, 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 we have the, you know, at least the first long trailer that will be coming somewhere in the summer, I would say. Yeah. You know, as part of this, whatever the summer blockbusters are this year, you can almost guarantee that the, the full trailer, I would say with marketing wise, that's when it makes the most sense to, right. to, to yeah. debut it. So I would say, you know, summer 2015 is when we're going to see, uh, what what Luke and Leia uh, look like from everything that I've seen of Luke and the pictures of the filming, he's got uh -huh. the Obi Wan beard. Ah, uh, so okay. I think he's you know almost going to be that kind of character. Cool. Um, to to some extent, and and uh, Han still seems to be in the same kind of uh, smuggler outfit. So I think he's still <laughs> going to have that you know that part of his personality still there and maybe he had to take it out of his closet um, and i'm very curious as to the relationship between leia and han as well because, yes uh granted you know daisy could be their daughter doesn't mean they're still together right and they, even in the books they have they, they get divorced ah. uh, and, and they come back together and after a, a period of separation for a couple of years but you know their personalities didn't make for a very long-term marriage <laughs> Yes. And, if you, and if you look at their personalities, you can certainly see that being a reality. So yes. it's going to be interesting to see, you know, if, they, if they're still husband and wife or they, they, they estranged at this point. Does the danger to the daughter bring them back together? Is that yeah. reunites Leia, Luke, and Han to begin with is some kind of something that happens to Han's daughter. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see. My, my 
guess is we will see the trailer before Avengers two. Yeah, I can, I, I can certainly I, see Mar you know Marvel and Disney, Disney are certainly yeah. are, are doing a lot more together, um, <laughs> and 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 they'd be fools not to because they're the, the two powerhouses really uh, is is going to be Marvel and Star Wars when it comes to to movie going. I mean, yeah. this this Star Wars movie is I think going to break all records when it comes to uh, <laughs> box office. I mean, I, yeah. I, it's just the the excitement level by that time will be just at such fever pitch. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. No. So two things with that. First off, this preview and just what we know about J.J. Abrams' personality and what he did with Star Trek, I think he's making a movie for everyone. So it's not geared towards Gen X. It's not geared towards kids who are five. It's geared towards everyone. So you're not going to see a Jar Jar Binks type character. You're going to see characters that appeal to everyone because – Let's face it, if you aim for 100% of the population, we'll show up and see it because we want to. Uh, the, the warning, and I think it was Geek Tyrant that had this article yesterday, <laughs> where they had all of the positive, quote, reactions to the, to the Phantom Menace trailer. <laughs> and, and that was unsettling to read because there were some people who were super excited after seeing the trailer for that. I and thought it was a great trail of the Phantom Menace trail. <laughs> yeah, the trailer was awesome. And then reality hit when we saw it. And, you know, people were trying to convince themselves, like, no, it was good. Yeah, it was good. I don't feel betrayed. So. Well, we uh, do have a good track I like, record. With I like the prequel. I'm not, I'm not one of the, I, granted, I don't think it's anywhere near as good as, as the originals, but I'm not one of these anti prequel types. <laughs> I, 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 like, I like the story. Um, you know, I, I don't disliked Jar Jar all that much. I think he was kind of a interesting character for the kids and 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 I know my you know my 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 son liked Jar Jar and he was of the age I think Jar Jar was 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 aimed at. So I, I don't you know begrudge Lucas for for the for the prequels. I, I think he went overboard with the the amount of green screen. Yes. And, and I think that the the actors were not able to give the kind of performance to a screen that they could have given uh, if, if a lot more on set type of ships and, and, and the, you know, the real life Falcon and, and all of those models to some extent do make for a much easier way to act. And, and I think that that's where the prequels fall down is that you, you almost have a very cold acting uh, that you don't get the, the, the warmth and the, 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 the feelings between the, the people that you do in the originals. Because you, you really get a, a feel for those original characters in, in 4, 5, and 6 that you don't get for some of the prequel characters. So I think that's where the, the prequels fell down. <laughs> Even though part of me does want to see the, the Sith in this have a trophy rack with Ewok and Gungan heads on it uh, as, a, <laughs> as a way to establish how, how truly cruel they are. But that might only endear them to fans, so that could backfire if they, they do that. So, a Sith, yeah, I was yeah, a Sith age, invasion I like, of Naboo could be good. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I, yeah if, if, Naboo, if the movie opens with Naboo taking the planetary nuclear hit and you see the Gungan city go up in flames, that, that would be fantastic. Uh, <laughs> Or a reference of uh, all the Gungans died 15 years ago in some genocide. Yeah, people are probably going, okay. All we're right. <laughs> we're cool. okay. With it. Yeah, we're, we're done. With, we're, we're good. Uh, well, now we're just into rampant speculation. <laughs> but, <laughs> Judge, we've taken up a ton of your time, and this has been a ton of fun. I hope you come back and talk to us the next time or for the next trailer, too. We'll have to do Absolutely. this. We can analyze every trailer slide by slide. Indeed. No doubt. Well, Your Honor, thank you. Jessica, thank you. And America, stay geeky. And may the force be with you. <laughs>